Oh, let me tell you guys something. Wow, let me tell you guys something. If you guys are ready for something, oh my goodness, Game Over 86, you've been telling us this for the last year, and it's still going on. I made videos like crazy that I'm going to throw up right here on carts, and I'm going to continually do that um, throughout the video because I want you guys to also watch these videos afterwards. But Nintendo, crazy shocker, there's hackers, data miners, whatever you want to call them. They have found... They have found that there are some games, Super NES games, in the code that Nintendo has been hiding or that they found that Nintendo is going to release. So let's go ahead and get right into that right now. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Nintendo like I just said, and I hope that you guys are excited um, that you're finally seeing what I've been saying about Nintendo this whole time. I think that they are anti-consumer, and I still believe they need to change. I still believe that Nintendo needs to get off their their little me party and their little it's about the game or it's about the fans and it's about selling consoles or it's about this and that and i really think they need to pay attention to what the consumers want because i think the consumers are always right the customers the people that support nintendo even the fanboys even the 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 fans out there of, of nintendo even the people like myself that enjoy nintendo as a console as a home console as a portable console Whatever, all the games that they've made over the years, I've support, um, I've supported them games with my wallet. I've I've bought in certain games, and I haven't bought in certain games because I felt like Nintendo needs to stop with some of their stuff. But here are a list of the games, guys, that uh, the data miners have found, and I'll just read them off uh, for you guys. I mean, I know you guys can read, but I might as well. Super Mario Kart, Super Soccer, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past, which is a pretty great game. Damon's Crest, Yoshi's Island, Stunt Racer FX, Kirby's Dream Course, Poppin' Twin B, Star Fox, Contra 3, Kirby Superstar, Super Ghosts and Ghouls, Kirby's Dream Land 3, Super Metroid, Super Mario World, Pilot Wings, F-Zero. I mean, I see like five or six or seven of these games that were already on the Super NES Classic, but that's no different. I mean, why would they make them games ever? And then there were some other ones that they said that were also in the making. Um, Super uh, Star Fox 2, which... He thinks it's funny because it was never a released game. Um, Super Punch Out, The Legend of uh, the Mystical Ninja, Super Mario All Stars, and Breath of Fire 2. Now I am gonna go on a little, a little side rant, and I'm gonna get back to what I mean, why I'm ranting a little bit about it. Nothing bad. So if you're gonna get butt hurt, you might as well not even watch the channel. If you're gonna think that Nintendo can do no wrong, just just don't even watch my video. But if you're here to actually hear some facts, some opinions, and some really good critiquing that I think Nintendo needs to hear, then stay in the channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you guys like and share this video because that helps support the channel enough. And it also helps get my video out to the uh, corporate shills and the shameless ass kissers that don't ever say this because they're too damn scared and they're willing to defend a company that don't give a shit about them. I have stated last year when I made a video, which I'm going to put right up here right here if you guys want to click on it you can um or if you guys are watching this on a big tv uh the links will be down in the description if you guys want to watch and click on them videos as well and i talked about the nintendo service will it be good nintendo's first time ever doing the nintendo service and i've said this before and a lot of the people that come into my channel every day know that i'm talking about this and they've heard it before and i'm going to go through it real quick nintendo don't care nintendo don't care about their fans okay they they charge you 20 bucks a year which, if you buy that, then you get to uh, the chance to buy them overrated, overpriced controllers, Joy-Cons, for uh, $59.99. But what a lot of people don't tell you is the shipping and everything. It costs about $70 here in the States. $70. For two controllers that you could buy anywhere else are way cheaper. Okay? They give you the privilege, since you got the year subscription, to buy them controllers. Thank you, Nintendo, for for giving us the privilege to buy. And then they have the audacity, like I've said before in other videos, to release games that only allow Joy-Cons or a Pokeball or all that other shit, which I don't have a problem. If you want to do that, that's fine. That's fine. I even had one commenter try to tell me that they're innovative and they change all their ways and they do certain things and, and they, they if they don't, you know, there's no change. Yeah, well, it's working out for PlayStation and Xbox. I mean, really, what have, what have they changed from the PlayStation 1 controller? They added a DualShock, and it's the same damn controller. A lot of people don't like change because they have to learn a new controller development and a controller layout, and they don't like that. A lot of consumers like to stay the same. Otherwise, you should just put a keyboard on every console and be like, change. 
it wouldn't go over well. The point I'm saying is a lot of people like to stay the same. They don't like change when it comes to their controllers, but that's all Nintendo's really got. That's why I brought up the part of them being a gimmickal console, and this is where you guys may get offended, but they are a gimmick console. Their number one console was a $250 Wii. That was their number one gaming house console. That was their biggest seller. All the other games, all the other consoles never broke 100, over 100 million. They didn't. And the Wii was $250. It didn't come with a DVD player. It didn't even come with really HDMI. In 2006. It did. It's always been a behind generational uh, machine. The, the main reason is because Nintendo likes to sell their first party title games. And they don't really care about third party titles. And their machine don't have to be real powerful to run all their first party titles. Because they're not really that great. Um, they don't usually use a lot of physical demanding stuff. They just don't. They, the, none of their games are, I mean, they got Unreal Engine, uh, a few games running on it, and uh, Yoshi's is going to be, a, uh, Yoshi's uh, New Crafted World, or whatever you want to call it, is going to be running on the Unreal Engine. Let's see how that goes. Let's see how Mortal Kombat 11 looks on the uh, Switch. Will it look really good? Will it run really good? That, well, that's still to be, be determined. Um, and this is where I say it's funny. We go back to the games that were on there. It's funny. They released NES games, right? And they're releasing three at a time this month too. They may release some new games. And, and it's like everybody don't want them games. Like I, And I shouldn't say everybody, but the majority of people don't want the same games that they've already had from the Wii. The Wii U, the 3DS, the DS, the Nintendo Classic, the Nintendo Su or Super Nintendo Classic, the NES, the Super NES. They just don't. Okay? They don't want them games. A lot of people are like, oh, I like these Super Nintendo games. Well, there's a reason why they don't have the virtual console. It's not that they don't want to do it. It's just that they won't make as much money as that they slowly release them on a service. And they charge you a paywall now just to play online because they didn't add anything to it. They're still a company that doesn't know how to get with the times when it comes to releasing games that their consumers want. We're listening to the consumers. Remember hearing all them corporate shields on stage at the video game awards and everybody was excited and they're like, oh, this is big gaming, big gaming news. No, it's not. They're just feeding into the narrative. They're literally going above and beyond to, to, to look like they care because they want you to buy their shit, okay? Here's the, here's the crazy thing. Data, data miners or hackers or whatever are using a PC and all this other stuff to hack in through the Switch, which is a horrible, horrible um, anti-hacking prevention. It was easy to break into for a lot of people. And then they're finding games that you can play on your PC right now for free. And Nintendo wants to charge you and shut all these ROM emulators down and all these people that were selling ROMs and, um, you know, illegally, which, you know, I don't condone them selling illegal ROMs, but I, I get it. Why don't you release uh, Little Samson then on the NES? Why don't you release a lot of these games that, I don't know, are $2,000 so that fans don't have to literally sit here and use emulators to play these ROMs? Why don't you release games that are fun, not... Just your first party title games. I mean, I know that you, that's really what you guys live by. That's what you guys have always lived by. That's why there's always a Zelda, Mario, Pokemon, Metroid. And them games are fun. Don't get me wrong. They are fun. The, the Switch is a fun handheld slash docked gimmickal console. I'll give them that. It's an underpowered performing console, but it's, it's still pretty good for what you use it for. Um, and every everyone's like, oh, man, this game looks awesome. Imagine if it looked awesome if it, you know, actually had some good power in it and i know a lot of people are going to be like well that's not what nintendo does that's the reason why they don't they don't care if third-party developers join them they don't care if battlefield 5 or um you know what are, what are some of the big games you guys want to play i'll just start naming them and i ask you this question because i want you guys to think about it kingdom hearts 3 wouldn't that be fun to play on the switch on the go i mean wouldn't it wouldn't any of them games be fun think about kingdom hearts 3 think about uh black ops 4 I'll keep going down the list. Red Dead Redemption 2. Why, why should they make you have to choose what to play? You should be able to just automatically choose what you want. And that was my argument with the guy. And I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want you guys to attack him. Because it's nothing against him. But he literally was defending Nintendo for some reason. And stating that um, I'm doing this for views or clicks. And don't you make videos for views and clicks? You don't just make videos and rehash the same background music and the same stuff and the same stuff and the same stuff every once every two weeks or whatever you do. And this ain't an attack on him either. I'm being real. They shell out the same stuff every year because they know the same people are going to buy it every year. People want Metroid Prime Trilogy for God's sakes. 
It's a fun trilogy. It's a fun with all the games. I get it. But that's what they want. They want some Super NES games released. I want new games released. I want Nintendo to open up their mind and make new games. I want them to bring some new IPs, not live off their old ones that are great games, but that's all they're going to ever bring. And that's where I say it's a gimmick. They, they do these gimmickal things that people find cool at first. Like the Wii was really cool for a lot of people. Man, you could move the remote. But who wanted to play certain games with that remote? I didn't. Oh, me, I'm the minority. Nobody wanted to play. How many people of you guys out there wanted to play Skyward Sword with the Numtruck controller? Be honest. You didn't want to play it with a Pro controller or a Wii controller, like a Wii pad, game pad controller like you did with all the other Zeldas that ever came before? Imagine this, and I, and I asked him this question. What if Ocarina of Time got remastered for the Switch and all you could use was Joy-Cons? Would it be that fun, really? I mean, wouldn't you want to play Ocarina of Time remastered with a Pro controller? I mean, but if they don't give you that option, isn't that anti-consumer? All I want is to have the option to play a game how I want to play it. And when I see these list of games, that's where I think they're still anti-consumer. They're not they're going to hold these games back until until they charge more. They're going to charge you more. There's people out there that are willing to pay more. There's people out there that I've seen over the videos and reviews and stuff that I've seen on other videos. They they're willing to pay 60 bucks to get Nintendo 64 games and GameCube games and SNES games and all this extra stuff. Why? Why do you need to pay that much money for these titles that were so old? I understand Nintendo don't want to devalue half their games and they don't want to get rid of them. But when I sit here and I see Nintendo doing what they've always done, which is refresh their same stuff that they've done time in and time out. And they live off of it. They live off of it. And do I say that they have bad games? No. Most of their first party title games are really, really good. I mean, ask yourself this question. If you had a console that failed, but you had the money to keep going on afterwards, and, and you know that most of your big heavy hitters, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, you know, Toad Treasure Tracker, Super Mario uh, 3D World, Super Mario Maker, um, a lot of games, Pikmin 3, um, just a lot of games. On the Wii U, they didn't sell that well. And as a business guy, you, and this is me talking to you guys, so think about this. And you, and you made a new console. Wouldn't you want to bring all them games over if only one million... Tropical Freeze is sold? Of course you would. Of course you'd want to port it. I get the business side of it, but they've done that every console. They've done that every year that they make a new generational console. And if you think I'm lying, uh, Wind Raker came out to the GameCube, and so did Twilight Princess. It also came to what? The Wii and the Wii U. Okay? It's not that I'm dogging it. It's just I want them to quit living off of the old games. But the Nintendo fans and even fanboys out there, the crazy ones that Nintendo can do no wrong or they protect every little thing that they do. They're the most innovative company, even though they still use GameCube controllers to play their Super Smash Brothers because that's the best way to play it. Why, don't, why do they do that? How would you feel just to play Super Smash Brothers with Joy-Cons? They don't give you the option to use Game controllers. You don't think people throw a fit? So the point I'm getting at is they're so innovative, but yet they, they messed up their analog stick. Even It wasn't even an analog stick with the Nintendo 64. They broke. They're weak. Um, they tried doing VR a long time ago with Virtual Boy. Failed at that. And, and, and a lot of people say, well, at least they tried. They had the, the glove, the power glove, which was a, not a success. They had the bazooka. They had the Nintendo bike. They had a bunch of stuff that wasn't a success. The Nintendo mat. I get it. They are innovative on some of the things. It doesn't mean that they're innovating anything new. They're just innovative with stuff that they're good at. First party titles, they're wacky ass controllers. Some of them are good, some of them aren't really good. I mean, I can go through a list, dude, of games that they've failed on, a list of controllers that they failed on. And the biggest thing, though, that a lot of people forget is when I see that hackers and data, data miners have found these games, I, dude, I've been saying this for years. That's what they do. I've been saying this for last year. Nintendo's the type of company that will hide all that. They don't want you to play all them games unless you're paying them to play them. They, they don't care. They don't care if you're happy. They don't want to give you Ocarina of Time unless they remaster it eventually and they're going to put it at a $65 to $70 game and people will buy it. I mean, there will be people to buy it. I mean, I'll probably end up buying it. And that's not the point. Ocarina of Time is like one of the best Zelda games of all time. 
but they do that with all the games. Mario Party, I played it with the Nintendo 64 controller. A controller, notice I say controller. I played it with the GameCube controller. I played it with a Wii controller, the Pro controller from the Wii U. And now the Switch, they don't give me the option to play it. And I'm not backtracking on all the shit that I said because a lot of people will be like, you already said this. I'm just saying, think about what Nintendo's doing right now as a consumer, as a company, to the consumers. Is A lot of people are bitching about how their internet is whack. It is whack. It's peer-to-peer. -peer. I talked about that already. And I brought this up, and a lot of people don't talk about this because they're shameless or they just don't know, and they, they, just, they just try to talk about stupid shit. And I'm saying some real shit. Rare Microsoft, if you're watching, please. Nintendo, if you're watching, please. Help Rare and Microsoft, and I don't care if this is a slap to the face, it's about the consumers. You make the consumers happy, guess what? We'll buy your game no matter what. We'll support the company. We will support spending money. If you shit all over us, we're gonna we're gonna treat you like shit. Like Bethesda and how um you know certain games have really came about. EA and Activision knows firsthand. Hello games that did No Man's Sky learned it, and they finally are starting to be like, well, let's make the game good so people will actually play it. Banjo-Kazooie Remaster 1 and 2, not nuts and bolts. If you want to throw it in there, do whatever. That's your guys' opinion, but 1 and 2 is what people want. Have Nintendo help you remaster. Have Nintendo help make you guys a new uh, 007 GoldenEye remaster. Let Nintendo help Rare do Banjo-Kazooie 3, a new game. And here's the kicker. Xbox, you'll get a timed exclusive. Obviously, it'd be a year. You guys would get it for a year, and then it would come to the Nintendo Switch. See, I'm not just hating Nintendo. I'm not just anti-Nintendo, because I'm not. I'm just trying to help the consumers, the people that are watching me right now. I want you guys and myself to get the most out of your console. That's why we paid them $300. You think I want to pay Nintendo $300, $60, and then them dictate how I play the game, how I should use what controller, because they feel like that's what controller I should use. I should have to pay them online just to play their game online, but now I have to play their style with their controller? That's bullshit. But anyway, think about this, guys. Nintendo Switch gets Banjo-Kazooie 1 and 2 remastered, Banjo-Kazooie 3 after that year exclusive, kind of like Crash Bandicoot did on the PlayStation 4, and then the Switch and the Xbox got it. And then in return, from Nintendo helping Xbox, you guys got to come together. You guys stood up on stage at the Video Game Awards and acted like you guys gave a shit. Then Microsoft can help Nintendo with their whack-ass online service, and Nintendo don't want to be like everybody else. Reggie fils already came out and said, we don't want to be like everybody else. Oh, you don't want to give people some games for free every month, and you don't want to actually release some games that people have been wanting, whether it be Nintendo 64 or GameCube or hell, even Wii or Wii U. Nah, you want to report all them games and sell them for 60 bucks, and you want to make that money, and then you want to slowly trickle these damn games in every single month. That's what you guys want to do, and you want to just draw people's wallets dry because that's how business works that's how you but then you want to stand on stage when it matters to you the most and say we care about the community we care well then you care about the community open up and change make a console that's actually up to date with the rest of the console so that third-party developers actually go you know what i think we want to come here a lot of people dog and say oh this game wwe 2k 13 or 2k 18 or whatever ran like shit it was ported over wrong no, your Switch can't handle some of the engines that run. And you guys can say, well, it runs Doom just fine. Yeah, and it runs at 30 frames. They had to lower it from 60 frames because it plays on 60 frames on the PS4 and the Xbox. For a lot of the fanboys out there that are watching these other YouTube videos that they don't explain it to you. The reason why it ran smooth is because it's running at 30 frames. Just like uh, Wolfenstein's running at 30 frames. They have to slow it down. Otherwise, the engine that's in the Switch can't process it. It can't run it. That's why Madden of EA, and I know a lot of people hate EA, myself included, that's why they were like, Madden's not coming. Frostbite engine ain't going to run on there that well. It just won't. And that's why I say that Nintendo doesn't care if third-party developers are happy. That's why they didn't support the Wii U. It wasn't that they didn't want to. It's just the Nintendo don't give a shit if third-party really wants them to. They didn't care about that. They care about what? Selling their controllers 13 times over. I mean, you got a Wii controller, correct? And it comes with Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Bowser, Koopa, Donkey Kong. I mean, I can go through the whole list. And then you have the actual GameCube controller, the ones that they can sell. They have Zelda, they have Mario, they have Peach, Yoshi. Like, I'm not dogging it, but, like, that's what they want to sell. They don't care, like, about pushing uh, Black Ops 4 or Red Dead Redemption 2 that some people on the Switch may really want. 
Now they have to go play it on something else that's not their preferred platform. That's why I always say jump to the PC eventually because a lot of people jump to the PC. And I'm not just a PC guy. I play consoles too, as you guys know. But like PC, you don't have to worry about anything. So if you guys are at that point where you can afford a PC and you're just tired of all the bullshit where you have to pay for services and you have to pay for this just to play a game, get a PC. Trust me, it'll save you guys a lot of money in the long run. A lot of people say all PCs cost a lot of money. Check this. It costs a lot of money up front, but in the long run, you actually save a lot of money. Trust me on that. Trust me. Trust me. You buy an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4 Pro, and a Nintendo Switch, that's a good damn PC right there. The point I'm getting at, though, is when I see these things, and, I, and yes, this was a little rant. Like I said, it would offend some people. Hopefully, it don't offend everybody. Hopefully, you guys are excited. I'm not speaking from a standpoint of where I hate Nintendo. I don't hate Nintendo. I don't hate anybody, really. I don't hate any company. I don't even hate any person that leaves comments. I'm just trying to be critical on a company that needs to change for the consumers, for us. Even the guy that left me them comments that was trying to defend Nintendo and saying that I didn't play a certain game or, you know, um, I should be more, uh, you know, do more research to be more this towards my fans or I should do this, but then deleted some of his own comments in there for some reason. I don't know why he did it. But but he did. I'm not attacking you, man. I, I feel for you. I just want everybody else to stop preaching and 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 prophesizing everything that like Nintendo's doing something great all the time because they don't always do everything great. There are things they do great controllers and games. Their consoles are normally lackluster a generation behind three years behind normally. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I made videos on it, dude. You can't tell me a 720p screen on a Switch and a 720p screen on a Wii U is change. They both have 32 gig of memory. That's nothing different. They just made it portable. And if people don't want to see that, then that's just because they're a fanboy. And that's why I say that. It's not an attack against you, but if you can't go outside your own your own beliefs and go, you're right, you're right, Game Over 86, they haven't changed a whole lot. They do remake the same damn games all the time, and people keep asking for the same damn games. And I get that. A lot of people do like playing the same games. But a lot of the people that keep asking about that make thousands of dollars on YouTube and can afford it and get these games given to them for free. Digitally codes, physical copies. They get it all giving to them. They're not going out there spending their hard-earned money on them. Some of them do, but not all of them do. And Nintendo knows that. I mean, Nintendo's finally got rid of their creator program so that people can just stream their games and give them free advertisement. I mean, how long does that take? Did you see Sony or Microsoft or any of PC or a lot of the games? No, it was hurting. And why did they do that? Why? Because they didn't want their first party titles to be shown out there. They don't want you to make money off of their name. Why would they ever do that? When I stream God of War and other games that are on the PlayStation 4, did Sony call me and say, no, we gave you a copyright strike because you didn't? No, they didn't because they, they care that we're actually showing off their stuff. Now, have they done stuff wrong? Yes. But Nintendo finally seen the light and they're like, why don't we just let these people stream our games? We get more, we get more eyes on our stuff. Duh. But there's things they need to change, starting with their internet, starting with their peer-to-peer -peer connection, starting with their remakes and the remasters. There's a lot of games that people didn't buy, and I get it, man. They're expensive on the GameCube. I get the trilogy for Metroid Prime. I understand some of these games are hard to find, like Little Samson, like I mentioned in the NES. I get that. That's why I want these games to be brought. If you're going to bring any NES titles, bring games that are really expensive that people haven't got to enjoy. And I understand some of them are licensed, uh, not to Nintendo. Some of them aren't Nintendo's uh, properties. And sometimes there are some things and some boundaries that, that you know, uh, deflect them on getting the game. And I understand that totally. But bring some games that people want. I've been saying this for a while and I'll leave that, like I said, up in the comment up here. In the, and if you're in the T, if you're watching it on TV and you don't see the bubble, obviously go to the description and watch some videos. I just want people to understand, dude, it's okay to be critical. It's okay to be informative and, and speak because if you don't, there won't be change. You want them to change. I want them to change. I want them to do better, not just for me, for the people that support them and play their games, for the fanboys out there, for everybody out there, for the fans. I want these companies to strive to be better. This is why I made the channel. I was tired of seeing all these corporate shields and these fanboys defend a console rather than critique them and say this is wrong you should change and 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 this is hopefully drawing eyes on me because i'm tired of seeing all these channels support everything that they do like nothing's wrong i'm just going to turn a blind eye while they rob me cold and i've stated this numerous times in my videos and it's 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 frustrating because 
people will come in here and get mad because I'm talking about their platform of choice. Like they're defending a little piece of plastic. And, and I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it with this. I seen the games. I know I went on to a little rant about how Nintendo needed to change. I put this all together. So I didn't have to make two different videos and make you guys have to sit here and watch different things. I wanted you guys. And for the people that stayed, thank you very much for supporting me. And I'm really passionate, dude. And if I wasn't, I wouldn't make these videos. I would shamelessly support Xbox and everything they did with their overpriced Kinect console. I would shamelessly support the PlayStation 4 when they made a PlayStation VR with no damn games. Nothing else besides the controller or the headset and the camera. Back Back in the day for $400 or $300. Yeah, oh, that was a great deal. Notice I didn't buy that then. And then, oh, I'm going to support PlayStation's Classic. Oh, yeah, I haven't even got one because GameStop canceled my order for some odd reason. When I tried, they didn't even send it to me. And I'm not going to pay $100 now for the PlayStation Classic. I'm glad it went down in price. And I still haven't got it because I still feel like it's going to drop down to 40 or 30 bucks. So take that, Sony. I don't give a shit. And when it comes in... Then I'll look at it when I have the money to pay for that. I ain't paying somebody a hundred bucks for that. And this is where I want to leave it to. I want you guys to really, really think about this. The ones that are hating my channel right now and getting ready to dislike it. Think about this. When you buy a Nike pair of shoes and your friends buy a Reebok, are you mad that they didn't buy Nike? Are you mad? Because the Reeboks aren't as good as the Nikes. When you buy Tide at Walmart and the other guy buys Gain, do you sit there and get mad at him and try to defend Tide over, over Gain? Do you? And when you go to the store and you somebody you're working and they order a Pepsi and you're like, why would you drink Pepsi? Coca-Cola is better. Do you do that? Because if you do, that's fanboyism. That is being a fanboy. And, and by doing that, you're, you're, you're showing other people in your channel that it's okay to support this greedy corporations out there that don't care about you. They don't care if you buy their Pokeballs. They don't care if you buy their t-shirts. They don't care if you even buy half their shit. Because they know they're going to have loyal, subjective followers and biased followers that are going to support them in everything they do no matter what. And that is where we need to change. And if you want video games to get better, if you want video game companies to quit giving loot boxes, yes, you have to quit with your wallet first and foremost. But second, you need to speak up. You need to be critical. You need to literally give a factual and sometimes passionate opinion on where they need to change. It's not like I just stumbled across a Nintendo when I was born in the 80s. I grew up playing Nintendo. Okay, I, I'm not 20 years old that lives off of one game or grew up playing pokey cards, Pokemon games, and growing up wearing all that shit. I played the yellow, the red, and the blue Pokemon on my Game Boy. Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance. Notice it took them three different, four different, if you think, the Game Boy Pocket or the Game Boy Light 5. Different versions to finally give you a damn controller that, or a damn handheld without a rechargeable battery. But think about that, guys. Think about all that shit when you guys are out and about. Oh, he's got a Ford. Oh, fuck Ford, man. Chevy's where it's at. I mean, people argue that I'm I'm bashing Nintendo. You're being anti con You're being hateful. Why? Because I'm saying some stuff that needs to be said? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I Game Over 86 that says some real shit from time to time? And uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not being biased. I'm an unbiased gamer YouTube channel. I don't sit here and support bullshit when I see it. And I damn sure ain't going to let people sit by and try to preach to me where I'm wrong or I need to do research or I'm doing it for the views and the clicks. What are you doing it for? Are you doing it to fill your own fantasy? Think about it. Think about it. You stand behind your game collections, all of the people out there, for what? To show everybody what you got, what you collected over the years? I got three girls and a wife. You think I got all the money in the world to just throw it at every game that comes out? But when you buy a game for, I don't know, 20 bucks on the Wii U, Tropical Freeze, and then they resell it for 60, do you feel like they're being consumer friendly? Do you think they sent out a letter to every 13 million people that bought their Wii U, and myself included, and said, thank you for purchasing the Wii U? No, they barely showed any advertising and commercials for it. You think they would learn, and a lot of people may say at the end of this video, well, game over 86. <laughs> there are third-party support. Oh, there is. Name some big third-party games that really support the Switch. Like I said. 
Think of it. Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, well, that may come to the Switch. Yeah. What, a year from now? Eight months from now when they port it and dummy it down? You have to wait longer. I mean, Dark Souls. Oh, Diablo 3. Oh, bl yeah, that, hey, you named big third party. Yeah, Diablo 3. Came out in the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC era. Or era. Generation that time. Congrats. You got a game that's 10 years old. I'm not dogging it. I'm just saying, like, the Switch is so badass. What games are you playing right now? Are you playing Smash? Are you playing Super Mario Brothers U and Pokemon and waiting for that Metroid? Notice you didn't name any third-party developers. I'm so, f it's so funny because I'm the man. And I'm not cocky, I'm not arrogant, I'm confident. I'm the man. I'm the best YouTube channel around. Because I don't kiss anybody's ass, I don't preach, and I don't stand by with any bias comments towards a console. I'm doing this because I actually care about video games for the future. I care about these companies to an extent of them doing better for us. That's the only thing I care about. Is if they make great games, I'll play them. If they keep shelling out the same games, I'm going to call them out and say, look, you need to quit giving us this game. You've given it to us six different times. If they're shitty internet or if PlayStation wants to do something greedy and shady, I'll call them out. If Microsoft wants to do something shady and greedy, I'll call them out. That's who I am. And I'm not going to change. So if you don't like my channel, Guess what I'm going to tell you? Hit the fucking unsubscribe button if you don't like what you hear. You don't have to come to my channel anymore. And if I offended you, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I'm not here to please everybody. I'm not here to make friends and buddy-buddy with everybody. Okay? I'm here to speak the truth because people out there that don't know all the truth, they keep getting corrupted by all these bullshit YouTube channels. And if I name them, trust me, you guys will never want me to debate you ever. Because, dude, I got so much ammunition, nobody can control me. I'm the best on this microphone, on YouTube. I am the man. And I stand by what I say because I know I'm right morally. I was raised right. And I was raised not to follow some bullshit corporation for greed. I don't care about... Oh, and by the way, if I do it for views and clicks, by the way, I haven't made jack shit in money. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that are uh, getting demonetized, and they're not even on YouTube anymore. They just go through Patreon. Yeah. I can make money on the side doing my own thing. I do this because I love video games, and I got tired of seeing these bullshit propaganda channels, these stupid-ass corporations, and all these YouTubers following, following what's the hottest ten trending topic. Social, social, social media Soldier Boy, notice I didn't do a video on that. Or Jablinski Games, notice I didn't do a video on that. Because I don't give a shit what they do. It's their grind, it's their hustle. I'm here to bring realness back to the video game world. And I may sound like I'm being a dick right now, I'm being the realest motherfucker you have ever seen on this platform. And that's a fact. And I'm here to bring pain, as in enjoyment, to all these fucking can bullshit companies that want to develop and bring the same shit over and over and then hide shit behind a paywall and they want to dummy down games and they want you to bullshit censor and they want to show you all this good shit and you're buying it for what for the enjoyment of pleasing yourself like i said i speak the truth because I don't stand by by a sponsorship. I don't get anybody giving me their games. And if they want to give me some games, I'll play them. But don't think it sit there that I'm going to just... If, you're, if you want me to review products, send them to my email. It's in there. Don't send me none of that scammy bullshit either. You want me to review a product? Send me the damn product. I'll give you my P.O. box. When I get it, I'll give you the address. Send me it. You want me to review your game? I'm going to be the most honest reviewer you've ever seen and by that people will respect me they'll respect the channel and they'll know when they click on game over 86 they know he's going to bring some real shit say some real truth that needs to be said and they know that they're not going to get some bullshit little biased opinion and they're not going to get their asshole tickled by my fingers to make them think you should go out and buy this game 
This has been Game Over 86. I'm sorry if I offended some of you by my cussing. But I'm sick and tired of making these fucking videos where I see all these YouTubers all giddy giddy and happy happy making thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars by talking about shit that they're sponsored by, giving shit for free, and not giving you guys a loyal, honest opinion. Because when you're biased and you fucking fanboy between something, there's never an honest opinion. Because you still have an attachment to it. And you can't trust people that are literally attached to a company. And me, that's where I'm different than most YouTubers. And there are some good YouTubers out there, and I appreciate them. And you know who you are out there. You've even talked to me personally. You've helped to me. I'm subscribed to you. So that should help you know who I like. I watch you because I appreciate you. I comment down below on your videos because I want you guys to do better, and I want you guys to get better, and I think you guys are doing better. And I hope that there's some people out there that respect my channel and respect my passion in this video game world. Because I'm sick and tired of getting on YouTube and seeing 15 fucking channels that I'm subscribed to showing the same damn video every single time. When it's a hot topic, oh, let's talk about it. They're doing it for the views and the fucking money. I'm doing it because I love video games. I do it because I love the passion, the, the fucking bullshit that it brings. All the fun, all the stuff like Destiny when I put 1,200 fucking hours into that game. And then Activision ruined that game. I talked about that recently on a video. I talk about all these other things going on. I mean, look at the background of my wall. Do you see fanboyism on anything? No, you see fucking passion. They make video games behind me, the wrestling DVDs. You see Back to the Future over here. You see Sonic. You see Destiny. You see PlayStation, Xbox, you see Play uh, Nintendo, you pl you see that Nickelodeon Gak right over there, huh? You see the DeLorean, the flux capacitor, the hoverboard. I support small companies that are good, like Castlemania Games, Eight Bit Dough, and this ain't an advertisement. I'm just so sick and tired of seeing everybody else that shamelessly is supporting a fanboyism, biased opinion. Be real. Be real. That's what YouTube was about. Not about pleasing your boss, your company's channel. Do what you do and you love what you do. That's how I am. If you love video games, love them. If they're a shit video game and you love it, love it. But don't sit around and lie just because everybody else ain't on. Everybody else, you want to be with the same. You don't want to piss anybody off. You don't want to be on that other bandwagon. I'm real, and I love you very much. I hope every single one of you guys watching my video takes notice. Heed. I love you. I really do, man. Pay attention to the rest of these channels. Remember what I said. When you watch these other channels out there, think about really what's going on. And check with yourself. Are they really being honest with you? Are you getting really good information about this? Are they really coming forward to you and really being passionate about what you are passionate about? Do you want to be lied to? Do you want to hear the truth? And I say thank you guys for staying through this rant. This is real. And it ain't going to change. And this is just the beginning of 2019. And I'm going to be coming back at them with even more and more videos. You want to know why? Because I love video games. I love the fans, the subscribers, even the people that hate me. I love you. And I love it, baby. You want to know why? Because I'm the man. And I speak the truth. Honest. Passion. Unbiased. Because I'm game over 86. And if you guys want to support me. Hit the subscribe button. Like and share every video. Because that will get this video out. It will get everything out. Higher and higher. More people that are shameless corporate shields. Or bullshit propaganda channels. Or bullshit fanboys will see this too. Maybe it might open up everybody's eyes to start being a little bit more real with their audience. I love you very much. Stay safe. Do a good deed. And I will see you guys on the next video. Peace. I love you.